This plant processes around 11 million tons of oil every year. A massive facility designed to produce the kerosene that powers our planes, the butane that fuels our kitchens, and the gasoline that moves our vehicles. But how does an oil refinery work? We visit the largest refinery in North America to discover the different processes that crude oil undergoes until it becomes the fuels, lubricants, and valuable components needed to manufacture millions of products. Civilization could not survive without it. This black and viscous substance is everywhere. It powers our cars, makes our planes fly, and provides energy to our factories. It lubricates our machines, our weapons, and even our skin. It paves our roads and is the chemical base of plastic, rubber, and synthetic fibers. Thanks to its high energy density, a small amount of oil can generate large amounts of energy. In 1859, Harwin Drag drilled the first commercial oil well in Pennsylvania, United States. It was a discovery that changed the world. Soon after, the need to refine that dark liquid was born. At first, refining was simple. Oil was distilled to obtain kerosene, a fuel used for lamps. The rest of the oil was discarded. But with the arrival of the automobile in the early 20th century, everything changed. Gasoline, once considered a useless waste product, became valuable. From then on, refineries evolved. They went from being rudimentary facilities to complex factories capable of transforming crude oil into a huge variety of products, from fuels to plastics, cosmetics, and medicines. This is the largest refinery in North America. It covers an area the size of 300 football fields. At its Wilmington, California facilities, more than 200,000 barrels of crude oil are processed daily. The oil arrives in large ships and is pumped to the coast. Inside each barrel is a mix of hydrogen and carbon molecules that form all kinds of bonds known as hydrocarbons. These compounds, along with others in smaller quantities, are mixed within the crude oil that comes from underground reservoirs. The refinery looks like a small city. Metal towers rise like skyscrapers while an endless network of pipes and valves snakes between giant tanks. But behind that industrial landscape lies one of the most sophisticated and technologically advanced infrastructures in the United States. Inside, engineers, operators, and scientists work to transform crude oil into products vital to our daily lives, fuels that move the world, oils that protect engines, and essential compounds for manufacturing plastics, cosmetics, textiles, and even medications. The process begins when massive ships loaded with millions of liters of crude dock at the terminal. With the help of powerful pumps, they unload their contents through a pipeline. This 75-centimeter diameter pipe transports the oil at an astonishing speed, more than 70,000 liters per hour, a constant stream of liquid energy flowing non-stop. The crude oil ends up in four enormous storage tanks, each tank can hold 300,000 barrels, enough to fill more than seven Olympic swimming pools. Once the crude oil reaches the refinery, it's still not ready to be processed. Despite its thick and dark appearance, it must go through several preliminary steps before becoming useful. In the massive storage tanks, the crude is stirred by powerful industrial mixers to homogenize it. Giant mechanical arms continuously stir the contents to ensure a uniform mix, free of separation or sediment. But mixing alone isn't enough. This oil comes with water, much more than you might think. That's why the next phase is decantation, a process that separates water from oil based on density. The heavier water settles at the bottom of the tanks and is carefully drained, leaving the crude as dry as possible. But there's still one important obstacle, salt. Oil extracted from underground contains mineral salts that if not removed, can corrode equipment or interfere with chemical reactions. To remove it, the oil undergoes a specialized treatment in desalters, where fresh water and electric current are introduced. This combination breaks the emulsions and removes the dissolved salts, resulting in cleaner crude oil. The refining process begins with one of its most impressive and crucial stages. Distillation. Crude oil is heated in an industrial furnace to temperatures above 370 degrees Celsius. At this intensity, the molecules vibrate so rapidly that the liquid turns into vapor. This hot, pressurized vapor enters a massive metal tower known as a distillation column, 
a vertical steel giant that can rise more than 60 meters high. Inside this structure, something amazing happens. As the vapor rises, the lighter than more volatile molecules, such as liquefied gas and gasoline, continue to ascend to the upper sections. Meanwhile, heavier and denser molecules, like diesel, kerosene, or fuel oil, settle lower down, accumulating in the lower levels. At the top are the lightest gases, like butane and propane, which are used to fill gas bottles. These gases leave the tower, are processed and stored for commercial use. Just below is the gasoline used as fuel for cars. Light gasoline is obtained, along with a heavier type called naphtha. Next comes kerosene, the fuel for airplanes. Then comes gas oil, the fuel for diesel engines. After that, fuel oil, which is used in factories and industrial boilers. Below that is lubricating oil, used to lubricate engines. And finally, at the bottom of the tower, is bitumen, also known as asphalt, which is used to pave roads. None of the substances coming out of the distillation tower are finished products. They require further treatment. They've been underground for millions of years and must be thoroughly cleaned to remove contaminants. One of the most important tasks at this stage is impurity removal, especially sulfur, a naturally occurring element in oil, but highly polluting when released as gas. The treatment process is used to produce a cleaner fuel, helping protect both the environment and our health. When the molecules are heated and come into contact with a special catalyst, a chemical reaction occurs that removes sulfur. These sulfur compounds can later be used as fertilizers and in the pharmaceutical industry, but not all components are ready. Some even require atomic level treatment. Heavier liquids need more processing to become useful. For them, a process called cracking is used, allowing the densest components of crude to be maximized. This type of crude contains long chains of carbon and hydrogen molecules. With cracking, complex hydrocarbon molecules are broken down into simpler, more practical ones, transforming heavy fractions into lighter and more valuable fluids. Reforming is another process that increases the amount of gasoline obtained from crude oil. One of the products separated during distillation is a liquid called naphtha. The number of carbon atoms in naphtha is similar to gasoline, but its molecular structure is more complex. Reforming rearranges the naphtha molecule into one similar to gasoline. This process transforms less useful compounds into high-octane gasoline. In a refinery, nothing goes to waste. A barrel of crude oil is too valuable not to use to its fullest. After going through the entire refining process, the products are still not ready to go to market. What comes out of the previous units are base components that must now be blended with millimetric precision to form the commercial fuels we use every day. Different compounds are mixed. Light gasoline, heavy gasoline, additives, stabilizers, and performance enhancers to achieve exactly the desired octane rating. This is how the different grades we see at gas stations are created. Regular, mid-grade, and premium, each suited for different engine types. Once blended, the fuels are stored in giant tanks. Their contents are transferred to tanker trucks. Each tanker can carry about 70,000 liters of fuel, enough for around 100 refuels. If you want to know how aluminum is made, you'll find the link in the description and in the first comment. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it, and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Also, subscribe to this channel and activate notifications to keep learning. Best regards.